Okay, so in this video, we will introduce the so-called equi-probability theorem. And as you will see, you already know this result intuitively. So let's derive this result intuitively through an example, a simple example of, say, rolling a regular six-faced die. So suppose you have a regular six-faced die. Of course, the faces are numbered from one through six. And suppose the experiment consists of rolling a regular die only once. So if you ask, well, what are the possible outcomes? Well, you can roll a one if, say, we uh, observe the figure showing up on the upper face. Well, you can roll a one, a two, a3, A4, A5, or A6. Now this is your sample space, right? The sample space S of any experiment consists of the set of all possible outcomes of the experiment. So we have our sample space with six possible different outcomes. Now let's look at different events and ask for the respective probabilities. So suppose we ask very simply, what is the probability of rolling, let's say, a 5? So if the event E, say, is rolling a 5, so we'll call this number, example number 1, then we're asking for the probability of rolling a 5. Well, here the event would be the singleton 5. And if you think of it intuitively, you would say, well, what are my chances of obtaining a 5? Well, they are 1 out of 6. And there's the probability of E. E being the event that we have just rolled a 5. And now let's think of how you can obtain this from the event of interest and the sample space. Well, how many elements are in the sample space? Well, there are 6 possible outcomes. So our sample space is size 6. And if you look, the event was rolling a 5. Well, that is a single outcome, so the size of our event is 1. It contains a single outcome. And you can see we can look at 1 over 6 as simply the size of our event over the size of our sample space. So the probability of obtaining a 5, so the probability of the event E occurring, is simply the number of elements in the event E over the total number of possible outcomes. Let's consider a slightly more complicated event. Suppose now that we're asking what is the probability of rolling, say, an odd number? Well, now the event will be slightly bigger, right? Our event is rolling an odd number. Well, here we have three possibilities. We could have a 1, a 3, or also a 5. And now once again we'll ask, what is the probability of this event? What is the probability that we roll an odd number? Well, again, ignore these as sets for now. Just think of it as well. There are three distinct ways of obtaining an odd number out of a total number of six possible outcomes. So it's just three out of six. There are three outcomes out of a total number of six outcomes that will give us the event of rolling an odd number. So the probability of rolling an odd number is three out of six. But you can once again view this as the number of elements in the events of interest the size of the event, E contains three outcomes, over the size of the sample space, the total number of outcomes of the experiment. Let's do one more. Of course, three out of six can be simplified to one half. What if the event was, say, 
rolling something larger than a two. So we're asking, what is the probability of rolling a number larger than two? Well, that means that we could roll a three, a four, a five, or a six. Now we ask once again, what is the probability of rolling a number bigger than two? Well, there are four possibilities out of a total number of six possibilities. So the probability of rolling a number larger than two is four out of six. And again, this can be viewed as the number of elements in our event over the total number of elements in our sample space, the total number of possible outcomes. And of course, four out of six can be simplified to two-thirds. And if you look here, no matter what the event was, we did the same thing intuitively. We said, well, the probability of the event occurring is simply the number of possible outcomes in our event over the total number of possible outcomes of the experiment. And you think, well, is there anything special here? What if we had somehow a bizarre die with eight faces or nine faces or twelve faces? Could this be applied? And of course the reasoning is the same. As long as, and this is where the part here, equi, is important. Equi means equal. So probabilities of this type boil down to simple counting problems as long as every outcome has an equal probability of occurring. So every outcome has to have the same likelihood, the same chance of occurring, equal. So if each outcome has the same probability of occurring, then counting, or I should say finding the probability of an event, therefore a subset of the sample space, boils down to looking at the number of possible outcomes in the event over the total number of possible outcomes of the experiment. And that is the equiprobability theorem. So for a lot of problems of probability, it boils down to simple counting problems. So let's take the result, which basically boils down to this. And I'm not going to write it down again, but the name is again the equiprobability theorem. And all you need are two things. First, you have a finite sample space, so the number of elements in the sample space is less than infinity. So you could have an experiment that um, where you have a possible number of a thousand different outcomes. It doesn't matter. As long as it is finite, this is the first condition. Second condition, each outcome must be equally likely. So if those two conditions are met, you have a sample space with a finite number of outcomes and every outcome is equally likely, then if you ask what's the probability of any event, so any subset of the sample space, the answer is the number of outcomes in the event over the total number of outcomes of the experiment. And that's it. So for a lot of problems of probability, it boils down to simple problems of counting. 